Hello guys, it's me Rasmus and in this video I'll show you how you can host your own Drone Wars 2.0 server. So first of all, if you want players from outside your local network to be able to connect to it, you'll have to do port forwarding. In case you already know how to do this, I'll leave time steps so you can skip the following step. So let's start with port forwarding on your computer firewall. So go to your Windows firewall, go to inbound rules, add new rule, set it to port, Hit next, set to TCP, enter the game port which should be 5577 unless you've changed it. Hit next, make sure connection is allowed. Hit next, hit next. Here you can add the description if you want. I'd recommend to use something like Drone Wars 5577 TCP. Now hit finish and press add new rule once again and repeat the same step but this time set protocol to UDP. So that the port 5577 is port forwarded for both UDP and TCP. Now once you've done that, you can press add new rule once again, but this time for the Steam port 27015 and this one only needs UDP. So just set to UDP right away. After you've done this, go to outbound rules and here just do exactly the same as we did in inbound rules. Just make sure to allow connection since the default setting for outbound rules is block connection. Now in case you want to host your server on Linux, I'll just quickly show you how you can open your firewall on Linux. So to check if your firewall is actually active, type sudo ufw status. If status is inactive, you obviously won't have to do this since the firewall is off. However, if it's active, just do the following steps. So to open a port, type sudo ufw allow and then the port slash the protocol. So you want to do this for the game port, which by default is 5577. And remember to open the game ports for both protocols, UDP and TCP. And then open the Steam port 27015 for UDP. Okay, let's move on to port forwarding the router. Now I've actually added UPnP automatic port forwarding to the game. However, it didn't actually work on most routers I've tested, but if you're lucky it might work for yours. To test this, just launch DroneWars from your Steam library with a dedicated server option. Now right click on DroneWars in your Steam library, manage, browse local files, and start a DroneWars 2.0 client by pressing on the DroneWars 2.0 exe file. Now check if your server appears in the internet tab of the server browser. If it does, that means the automatic port forwarding worked, or the ports are already open on your router firewall. However, if it doesn't show up in the internet tab of the server browser, you'll have to do the following step. So, to port forward your router, open the command prompt by typing cmd, enter ipconfig, find the standard gateway and copy-paste it into your browser. Now you should be on the login page of your router. This will obviously look different depending on which router you have. However, the following steps should be more or less the same on every router. Now log into your router. You can usually find the password under your router. Otherwise, you can just try the password admin or ask the person who is responsible for managing the router in your house. Now try to look for a setting called port forwarding. Many routers have this under not configuration. You can obviously also look up port forwarding for your router on the internet if you run into issues. But once you have found port forwarding, hit create new rule. Now if there is an IP filter, look for IPv4 address in your command prompt and just copy paste it in. In case you have closed your command prompt, you can get your IPv4 address by typing ipconfig as well. Just be careful if you have a dynamic IP address, it might change and you'll have to change it in the settings here as well. Set both start ports to 5577 and both end ports to 5578. Set protocols to both, TCP and UDP. If you only can select one for some reason, just repeat the step for both protocols. Now save the rule and repeat the step for the Steam Master Server port. Start ports 27015 and end ports 27016. For this port, set protocol to UDP since we only need UDP for this one. You can now save this and close the browser. Now with the port forwarding part out of the way, we can finally get started with the actual server. Now go to your Steam library, right click on Drone Wars, manage, browse local files. Now right click on the Drone Wars 2 exe file. Now hit create link or whatever Verknüpfung erstellen would be in English. Now you can rename the link to something like Drone Wars 2 server. Then right click on the link, hit properties and add minus batch mode, minus no graphics at the end of the path. Now apply and OK. And now just double click on the link to start your server. Note that you can probably ignore most of the log messages in the console. However, just keep an eye out for messages that are marked with important. Now that you have launched the server, you can go into the Drone Wars 2 data folder. And there should be a folder called server configs. Now in this folder, you'll find JSON files, which you can use to configure your server. Just use node editor or I'd recommend Notepad++. So the most important file here is the server config file. Let's quickly go through that. If server is public is set to true, that means your server will show up in the public server browser if you have done all the port forwarding stuff correctly. 
If is secure is set to true, that means your server will be protected by anti-cheat and banned players won't be able to join. However, if you set this to false, your server may also not show up in the internet server browser. Server port is literally just a server port, just make sure to match that with your port forwarding settings in case you want to change it. Query port and Steam port are ports that Steam requires for the server browser. I highly recommend to not change them, because otherwise your server might also not show up in the internet server browser. If auto server reset is set to true, your server will shut itself down and restart itself again at the interval below, which is in seconds by the way. For now there is only one map, so just leave this as is. However, there will probably be added more maps in the future. Max players is obvious I think. Server name is the name your server will have in the server browser. These allow voting features aren't fully implemented at this point I think. Uh, however I plan to do it so that you can like have a game mode and map rotation in case you don't want voting. But for now just leave these as is. Waiting for players time is how long the server will wait for players once enough players to start a round have joined. This is also in seconds by the way. Min players are the required amount of players for the server to start a round. If UPnP auto port forwarding is set to true, it will try to automatically port forward your router. However, as I said, this didn't work on most routers I've tested with. If you want, you can choose to let your server run on a game server token, which you can enter below. However, I just recommend leaving this as is. In the server owner Steam ID field, you can enter your Steam ID 64 so that you automatically get admin rights on your server. You can find your Steam ID 64 by looking up your profile link on, for instance, Steam ID IO. Below you can set a welcome message that the server will send to each user when they connect. Now whitelist and password aren't fully implemented yet, so just ignore them for now. Once you're done changing configs in this file, hit Ctrl S to save it. Now let's move on to the admin list JSON file. And here you just enter the Steam IDs of the people you want to give admin rights on your server and separate them with commas. Again, press Ctrl S to save. Blacklist and suspensions list is what the server will use to manage server bans. Blacklist is for permanent bans and suspensions is for temporary bans. You can of course also modify these files manually if you for instance want to blacklist some Steam IDs even before they join your server or unban some people. So for the blacklist the format looks like this. Steam ID, semicolon, ban reason. And in the suspensions list, Steam ID, semicolon unban date, semicolon ban reason. With the player badges file, you can give your players on your server custom badges. And the format here is Steam ID, semicolon, and the name of the badge. You can also give the badges different colors by using HTML color codes, for instance like this. In the gameplay configs, you can change some gameplay related values. I'll probably add more here in the future. And the whitelist, as I said, isn't implemented yet, but the way it's gonna work is only those Steam IDs listed on the whitelist will be able to play on the server. Now that you're done with the configs, you can enter C reload in the server console to apply the configs, or simply just restart the server. By the way, there are a few useful commands for the server console. You can view them by typing help. Now let me just quickly go through the steps you have to do on Linux. So the game isn't actually supported on Linux, however with the following steps you can still get a game server running. So press on Steam, Settings, Steam Play, and make sure to enable Steam Play for all titles and select the Proton version. Now after downloading, press on Play, select the dedicated server option and hit Play. Now the server console is a bit buggy on Linux. For instance if you enter a command it will remove previous console messages, but it's working. Now if you're hosting the server in your local network, do not join via the internet tab in the server browser, only join via the LAN tab or just hit direct connect, because otherwise you might get some really strange networking behaviors. But don't worry, all the other players from outside your local LAN network can of course connect via the internet tab, without causing any issues. By the way, if your server is running on the same machine, you can just hit direct connect and press connect without having to enter anything in the IP and port fields. Now on your server, you can open your admin menu by pressing H or whatever you bind it to. And here you have some commands, for instance, you can restart the round, end the round, or go into sandbox mode, which just disables the match manager on, until you hit round restart again. You can also select one or more players by holding shift in the player list on the left, and then do specific actions with them, like changing their character class or force them into another team. As a server admin, you also get the admin override selection button in the game mode voting menu, which will just fuck the democracy and override all the other votes with your vote. Now I think this was pretty much it for this video. If you run into some issues, don't be shy to ask for help. Have fun with your server and see you in the next one. Bye.